My friend, this question which we are going to discuss now happens to be one of the favorite questions, especially for MNC companies and is asked both in the coding round as well as the technical face-to-face -face round. It's a very simple question. Let's have a look at it. Given an integer value n, write a program to print the sum of all digits in n. Now, what does this mean? Clarity on what the expectation of the program will always appear in your mind if you look at the input and output format. So, they're saying if input is 2431, then the output has to be 10. Now, how did 2431 become 10? Because 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. That's all. So, sum of all the digits in a number. That's all. So, this is only your n value. This should be the output which you are going to print. Am I clear? Now, how do we do this is what we have to look at. But before that, I want all of you to try it once. I hope all of you gave it a shot. Some of you probably have done this. It's quite an easy program. If you know the trick easily, you can do. Now, those of you who are new to programming and have never built your logic by writing code, try to understand how this works, okay? So, what does the program say? Program says, I will give you one n value. Let us assume that n value is 2, 4, 3, 1, like this. Now, your ultimate aim is what? To find the sum. That is your ultimate aim. You have to find the sum of all the digits. Now, I will create one variable called a sum. Initially, the value is going to be 0. That is the initial value of sum I am going to give. Now, if you think about it logically, one way to do this is, I can take the last digit from this number, 1. That 1 I can add it to sum. So, 0 plus 1 will be 1. Correct? Then, I should remove this last digit from the number. Then I will take the next number 3, last number 3. Then I will add it to the existing value of sum. Sum will get updated. Then I will remove 3 also. Then what will be remo uh, remaining is 2 and 4. Then I will take the last digit 4, add it to the previous value of sum. Then I will remove that 4 also. Then the last remaining number will be 2. Then I will take that last number, add it to sum and that way I will get the sum of all digits. Now, why am I focusing on always taking only the last number and removing the last number is because this can be easily achieved in programming. How you may ask? For example, you want this one, you want this one, the last digit, see how to do. If you want to do this, all you need to do is n modulus 10. Now, we didn't understand. Modulo operator in programming does division only. So, let me just show it to you, like division. What is n value? 2, 4, 3, 1. What are you dividing it by? 10. Now, if you put modulo, please understand, what this will do is, it will not give you quotient, it will give you remainder. And if in case I were to do the division, that is the quotient, this is the remainder. Now, if you look at the remainder carefully, you will notice, what is the remainder? 1. What is the last digit? 1. You see it is matching. Yes or no? So, that is the advantage of doing n modulo 10. Because modulo operator will divide the number by 10 and give you the remainder. And the remainder will always be the last digit. Yes or no? Now, I will take that last digit and I will store it somewhere. To store it somewhere, I will create one more variable called as remainder. I will take that last digit and store it inside one variable called as remainder. I will call it as rem. Now, you know, if 2, 4, 3, 1, modulo 10, if I do, the remainder is going to be 1. That's all. Am I clear? So, you got the last digit. Now, what you do? Take that last digit and add it to this existing value of sum. Sum plus remainder. Old value of sum plus remainder. And you know, that is nothing but 0 plus 1. And whatever 0 plus 1, that is 1, I will get, I will put that back into sum. So, sum will get updated from 0 and become 1. And that is what I am showing. Assign it to sum. Because remember, assignment is right to left. Clear to clear? So, 0 plus 1 is going to be 1. Now, sum is 1. So, now sum is 1. Am I clear? Now, watch it carefully. Now, what I need to do is, next time I want to repeat the same process. I want to take the last digit. But the last digit this time should not be 1. It should be 3. So, if the last digit should be 3, then from this value of n, I should remove this 1. That is the previous remainder I got. I should remove this 1. Now, how do you remove the last digit from an existing number? Again, division using 10 only will help you. How? This time, I will not do n modulo, I will do n slash 10. Now, slash operator will also do division. And please understand, 2, 4, 3, 1 divided by 10. That is the quotient, this is the remainder. If you put modulus like this, you will get remainder. 
If you put slash, you will get quotient. And look at the quotient carefully. What is it? 243. And what is 243? That is removing one. Yes or no? So, whatever quotient I got, that quotient I will give it back to n. I will assign it to n like this. So, see, 2431 divided by 10 is 243. The 243, I'll give it back to n. One variable can store only one value. So, this value gets replaced by this 243. That's all. So, last digit you removed. Correct or not? Wonderful. Now, what I should do is, I had to find the sum of all the digits, which means I should again repeat the same process. Now, I should find the last digit. How to find the last digit? This is the way to do it. Yes or no? And what is n this time? 243. 243 modulo 10, if I do, then remainder is going to be 3. Take that 3, give it to remainder. 1 gets replaced by 3. Yes or no? Ah, sir, next what will you do? Next what I will do is the next step. Take this 3 and update it to sum. Yes? And if in case I were to do the next step, then you know it is nothing but uh, 3 plus 1, which is 4. And that 4 is what I will give it to sum. So, sum value gets updated. Sum is 4. Am I clear? Next, I want to remove this 3 from n. I want to remove the last digit. How to do the remove the last digit? Divide by 10 and update the value of n. And if I do that 243 divided by 10, 24 will be the quotient. That you give it back to n. n will become 24. That's all simple. Again, repeat this process. Take the new value of n, 24, and divide it by 10, but I want the remainder. And the remainder in this case will be 4. Yes or no? Remainder got updated. Again, come down. Take remainder, take some value, add them together. 4 plus 4 is 8. Give it to sum. Sum becomes 8. Yes? Next, remove 4 from the digit. How to remove it? Take n divided by 10. So, 24 divided by 10, you know the quotient is going to be 2. And that is what I am going to give it to n. n is 2. Again, do the same thing again. N modulo 10, 2 modulo 10. If you do, what will be the remainder? Remainder is going to be 2. If you divide it, remainder will be 2. Correct or not? Take that, give it to remainder. Very good. Next, take sum, take remainder, add it together. 8 plus 2 is 10. That 10, give it back to sum, which means 8 plus 2, 10. Sum gets 10. That's all. Next, come down. Remove this 2 from the equation. How to remove it? Do this N divided by 10. 2 divided by 10. Please tell me, if I divide 2 by 10, what is going to be the quotient? Quotient is going to be 0. Understood? And that is what I will give to n. Now, if you see carefully, n became 0. The digit became 0. Correctly, you have already got the sum. So, you can see this process of first extracting the last digit, then adding it to the existing value of sum, updating sum, then removing the last digit. I kept repeating this again and again and again. Whenever in programming you repeat something multiple times, we have to make use of a concept called as loops. Yes? And if you look at how this loop should work, this should keep working. This should keep working. These three lines should keep executing as long as this n value was not 0. Yes? The moment n value became 0, you should stop. Which means, if you think about it, in English I'm writing, I'm putting this inside curly brackets. These three lines I'm putting inside curly brackets. And in English I will say, as long as n value is greater than 0. That way also I can say, as long as n value is greater than 0, do step 1, step 2, step 3. The moment n value becomes 0, stop. Correctly, you would have got your sum. Yes or no? That as long as effect in programming is only achieved using a loop called as the while loop. It's achieved using while loop. I hope you will understand. So, as long as n is greater than 0, step 1, step 2, step 3, repeat. Step 1, step 2, step 3, repeat. The moment n becomes 0, this condition fails, you come outside. That's it. This is all the logic is. I hope you are able to understand. Now that you know this logic, let me show you how to write the code. Now let's write the code. In most of your coding interviews, please understand, code will not be written in your laptop or your desktop or your computer. Code will always be written inside a browser, similar to how you guys are practicing on TAP Academy's platform. Yes? Now, please try to understand. Usually, in this question, they would have already created one method 
which we are used to calling as functions in C and C++. Okay? Now, they would have given you the you know, signature of the method. They would have already created the method. But inside it, they would have left it empty. Okay? Also, they would have written some lines to take this n value as input. This code is basically to take n value as input. I am not going to explain this in depth. And then they only would have called this sum of digits method. They would have only passed this n value. And whatever this returns or gives back, they would have directly printed it. Your primary task is to only write the logic of calculating the sum and return the sum. That's it you are supposed to do. So see what I am going to do? I will go here. First of all, if you remember, n value is already given to us. I don't have to create n. But I need two variables. First of all, what do I want to calculate? Sum. So I will say int sum. And initially the sum's value is 0. So I will make it as 0. Clear? Now I will press enter 1, 2, 3 times. And what I will do is, I will say return sum. Return sum. Boss, this is all you are supposed to do. You are supposed to return the sum value which it will print. Am I clear? But now in between this, you have to now write the logic. And that logic we have already calculated. So watch it after this int sum. Int sum. I will go and say int remainder rem. Okay. And this remainder value also maybe initially I will make it as 0. I will make it as 0. Am I clear? Ah, next, what are you going to do? Or even if you don't give it as 0 is also fine. Just remove that 0. Let us not give any value. Let it be empty. Okay. Next. You know the logic as long as while as long as this n value is greater than 0. As long as this n value is greater than 0. What should you do? Come inside. Three steps. Step number one is to extract the last digit from n and give it to remainder. How to do it? n modulo 10. We will extract the last digit. Give it to whom? Remainder. Assignment remainder. Clear? Next step. Take this last digit, add it to the value of sum. Sum plus remainder. Sum plus remainder. Now this value, give it to sum. Update sum. Correct or not? Next, remove the last digit from the n value. Remove it itself. How to remove? n divided by 10. Now after removing it, what is left out? Give it to n. Give it back to n. So, n will have the last. That's it. These are the lines. This will keep executing as long as n is greater than 0. Moment n becomes 0, this will stop. What will you do? Return sum. Scroll down. All this code will already be written in the platform. Most of the drives. Nobody will expect you to write from scratch. Anyways, if in case I were to go here, compile this code, and if in case I were to execute this code, clearly you can see cursor is blinking, waiting for you to give input. 2, 4, 3, 1. I will give, which is the number which we have taken as input. If I press enter, correctly answer is 10. Once again, I will execute. I will give 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I press enter, correctly answer is 15. Yes or no? So it works. Now, I want all of you to try this question and see if all test cases you are able to pass.